Hello Excel friends! In this exercise we're going to use Excel to figure out the minimum score we need to earn on a final exam in order to get a desired grade. Now we'll see how we can build a model in Excel and try out different values, but then we'll learn how to use the very powerful Excel feature known as Goal Seek. Let's learn! So let's start by launching Excel and getting into a blank workbook. I'll double click the Excel window title bar to expand to full screen, and I'll zoom the size to 200%. Let's also save as and call this file Goal Seek Grade Calculator. And make sure you remember where you're saving. Now we need some data to calculate grades, and this includes the categories the student is being graded on and the weighting of these categories. So to get this information, let's open up a browser. Now, my students can find this information in their Canvas site, but for those students who aren't in my class and want to follow along with the same example, I've put up a web page with the same data we're about to copy. And you can find this at the address gallagher.com slash example dash grade dash table, all lowercase. And remember, my last name is spelled like gallaugher, G-A-L-L-A-U-G-H-E-R. And in addition to Goal Seek, this exercise will give us a chance to demonstrate getting data from a web table for use in Excel. And so here's the table we see on the web. It has two columns. The left column is the category of the item being graded. The right column is the percent that that grade is going to be weighted at. And as we're about to demonstrate, whenever you see a table like this on the web, you can highlight it, copy it, and paste the data into Excel. So we'll do that now, but I don't need the total line on the bottom. So I'm going to click just after the 30% in the final exam row, and I'm going to hold down the mouse and drag up to highlight through the very first category, which is online reading quizzes. Then I'm going to copy this using Command C on the Mac, Control C on Windows. You should have that keyboard shortcut memorized by now and then I'll head back to Excel. Now I'm going to click in cell A2 and I'm going to paste this in Command V on the Mac, Control V on Windows and we see the data pastes in but it's got a different font and a font size than the default used in an Excel worksheet so let's change that. Now we can do that a few ways. If you're wondering what the default font and font size are for Excel you can just click up here in cell A1 and we see it's the Calibri font in 12 point size. And so now that I know this, I'm going to highlight all of my data. Now, even though Calibri 12 is showing for the font and point size, this is only the setting for cell A1. It's not for the entire selection. So to apply it to the entire selection, what I'm going to do is go up to the font selection menu, and I'm going to pull down and select Calibri, even though it was in there already, but that changes the font for the entire selection. Now it's the same thing for the point size. It says 12 in there, but only the cell at address A1 is in point size 12. So in order to apply this to the entire selection, I could either go and pull down and select 12 on the menu to the right, or I could just retype the number 12 in the font point size box and press return. Now this is Excel, so there are lots of other ways to accomplish the same thing. Let's undo two times, once to get rid of the point size change, once to get rid of the font change. And then with the selection still highlighted, we can go up under the clear menu in the home ribbon and select clear formats. That resets all the formatting information to Excel's default formats. And I'm going to undo twice to go back to an empty worksheet because I want to show you one more useful technique, and that's called Paste Special. So we know that a regular paste will take the font information from our web page and paste it into the cells. Now we can't paste table results into the formula bar because what that'll do is it will paste everything into just a single cell and that's not what we want. But here in the home ribbon there's a paste icon on the far left and just to the right of that there's a drop down arrow. If we click on that and pull down we see that there are several options. Now one is to keep the source formatting but that's not what we want. That's what we get by default. It keeps the formatting from the web page. Now, if you have formatting in the cells you're pasting into, you can match the destination's formatting. That would actually work for us, but let's try Paste Special instead. Now, if you select this, what this does is it brings up a dialog box with some more options. HTML formatting is the formatting used in web pages. We don't want that, but if we select text on the bottom here, it'll paste in our values, but it will ignore any formatting from the web page. So select text, click OK, and we have the result just as we wanted it. So if you ever run into a problem with unwanted formatting, remember you can Paste Special with text to paste in without including any formatting. Now I'll undo one more time to show you that Excel's right click is context sensitive. So if I right click on a cell, everything that you can do in that cell shows up and I can see paste special is an option where I right click. Now it's not the best user interface because I need to go to paste special and then I have to go over here to the right and select paste special again. But what that does is it brings up the paste special dialog box that we just worked with where we can select text, okay, and get our desired result. So lots of ways to get things done. Hopefully you see your Excel skills are really leveling up. So let's keep it going. I'm going to auto fit column A by double clicking between A and B, and then let's type in some column headers into row one. So these will be category first, then percentage, then score, then points toward final grade. And down here in A8, let's add the word total. And for B8, let's click on auto sum and sum up from B2 through B7. Press return and you should see that total to 100%. Now in column C, let's enter some fictitious scores for everything except for the final exam. So those will be 95, 80, 90, 84, and 65. 
And why don't we highlight C2 through C7 and add a decimal point. Then in D2, why don't we calculate the points toward the final grade for this first category. So we'll say that the formula in D2 equals C2 times B2. Press return. We see this will add 9.5 points to the final grade. And then let's double click on the fill handle in the lower right hand corner of cell D2. That propagates the formula down, looking good. Let's add a decimal point, whoop, that adds two because we already had one decimal point in some of these values. So let's reduce a decimal point, then let's auto fit column D. Then I'll click in cell D8 and I'll click in auto sum, press return. And right now there's nothing entered in cell C7. So if they get a zero on the final exam, they'll get a 58.2 for the course. And so now we've just built a spreadsheet model where we can enter different values for potential final exam scores into cell C7. And if we want to see what it'll take to get a B plus in this course, that's a total score of 87, we can enter different values in cell C7 and see how this impacts the total score in D8. So we can try this out with different values right now. So if I enter an 87, that'll give me an 84.3. That's not good enough, that's a B. If I enter a 92, that'll give me an 85.8. That's also a B. What if I get 100? Well, that'll give me an 88.2, that'll work. What about a 95? That'll give me an 86.7, but this professor doesn't round up, so that's not good enough. And you can keep trying these values, but there's an even better way to find a value that you want. We can use Excel's built-in Goal Seek feature. Now, Goal Seek is super useful for determining a value that's needed to arrive at a desired result. And the way that we find Goal Seek is it's under the Data tab. So let's click Data. This brings up the Data ribbon, and there's lots of new options in here. Goal Seek is under the What If option to the right. So let's pull down this menu and select Goal Seek. Now Goal Seek has three values or parameters that need to be set. So the first is set cell. Now this is the cell that will hold our goal. So for us, that's going to be cell D8. So let's make sure first that we've clicked inside of the set cell box, and then let's click the D8 cell behind it. And we see that Excel puts the value D8 in as an absolute reference with dollar signs in front of the addresses column and row. Totally fine. And then we have this box two value. That's our second goal seek parameter. And this is asking us, what do we want the set cell to arrive at? Now here we're gonna manually enter the number 87 since that's the minimum value that we need in order to get a B plus for this course. And then finally, there's this option that says by changing cell. This is the single value that we have control over in our model. And in our model, this is the final exam score. So that's gonna be cell C7. So first let's make sure that you've clicked inside of the by changing cell box. Then let's click on cell C7. Excel enters this as an absolute value as well, but again, totally okay. And now let's watch what happens in cell C7 when we click okay. It's pretty cool. So here goes, let's click okay. And we see the numbers whiz by until we arrive at the perfect value for our final score of 87. So the 87 is in cell D8, that's what we want our set cell to be. And the minimum final exam score we need is a 96.0. That's what we see in C7. And that's the cell we told Goal Seek that it could change. Very cool. Now Excel keeps this Goal Seek status box up. If your Goal Seek took a long time, you would see these values change in real time. But our computers are super fast and this model is not very complex. So our model is done. And the box itself doesn't tell us very much. It just says that our target value was 87 and we've arrived at the current value, which is 87.0. So we could just click OK. The cell that we really care about is cell C7. And that's where we see 96.0 is the final exam value we need to get a B plus for the course, which is that final total score of 87. And I hope you feel pretty good because now you are able to use Excel for some goal-driven modeling. You can predict a minimum value needed to get the result that you want. You never again need to ask a professor, what do you need to get on the final exam to get that desired grade? Feel your power. So goal seek is cool. Let's do a little bit more formatting before we finish up with some final questions. So the value in D1 is pretty long. It would be nice if we could keep all of this text in a single cell, but maybe wrap the text that's in that cell so that it shows up across two lines, one on top of the other. And we can do that. So let's learn something new, Excel's wrap text feature. So first let's click on the cell that we wanna modify, that's cell D1, and then let's click on the home tab to return to the home ribbon. Wrap text is just to the left of the number format pull down. So let's pull down the menu arrow just to the right of wrap text here. And we see we have two options, wrap text or shrink to fit. Now shrink to fit will shrink the font size until the text fits into the current column width. Now we don't wanna do that, but now you know what it does. We want wrap text. So let's select that. And now if I click between D and E and I drag to the left, I don't see much of a change. I can see the text looks almost like it's been right justified, but that's not what's happened here. The text is actually in the cell 
cell and it's wrapped across multiple lines. It's just that the text in the cell is bottom aligned and the row height isn't tall enough to show all of the lines of text in the cell. So all you're seeing is the bottom or the last line of multi-line text that's in this cell. But now let's fix that by increasing the height of this row. Now we already know that you can double click between columns and auto fit the column width. Well, you can also double click in between rows to auto fit a row height. So let's double click on the line in between rows one and two, and this widens the row to give us some more space. It's actually not perfect. In this case, we're seeing that we've got some still unwanted space above this text. You might not be seeing this depending on the width that you resized your column to, but I can fix this easily enough. I'm just gonna expand the width of column D, and then I'll once again double click on the line between row one and two. That auto fits the row height, and now things look perfect. And now let's select the cells from D1 to A1 and set these header values to bold. And why don't we right justify the values from B1 to D1. Let's also select A1 to D1 and italicize these values. And I really like the format in row one, so let's copy that to our final row. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that A1 through D1 is selected and then click on the format painter. And with the format painter set, I can drag from A8 through D8 and that's looking sharp. Now we just need to reset the percentage value in B8 and in D8 we need to set this so that it's got a single decimal and underneath the values in row one why don't we add a double border underline and under the values in row seven why don't we add a single border underline and with that my increasingly skilled friend you have created quite a spiffy grade calculator. And now let's have you use Goal Seek to find some additional values. So let's put two new labels in A10 and A11. In A10 we'll say exam score needed for B, which is an 83. And in A11 we'll say exam score needed for an A-, minus, which is a 90. And you should use Goal Seek to find out these two values. And when you've got the values, you can just enter them in B10 and B11 respectively. Why don't you format those so they're in boldface and the score values have a single decimal point. Then be sure to save your work and follow any additional submission instructions that your instructor may have given you. Now while we only covered a few topics in this video lesson, we learned one of the more powerful and useful features in Excel, Goal Seek. So now anytime you have a question like how many or how much, Goal Seek can help you find an answer for any calculation that you can set up in Excel. Now we also learned how to paste special, how to wrap text in a cell, and how to auto fit row height. If you're seeking excellence, I think you just found some. Keep at it you spreadsheet savvy Excel whiz! and stay excellent.